Hey everybody, Mike Miller here from Try and Visual, and today we're going to look at how to create this galaxy effect in HitFilm Express 2017. Now, most of what we're going to be doing would work in earlier versions of HitFilm Express or HitFilm Pro or HitFilm Ultimate. So here we are in HitFilm Express 2017, and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new composite shot, and I'm going to call this Galaxy Setup. I'm going to leave it at 1080p and 24 frames per second because I record my tutorials at 24 frames per second. Next thing I'm going to do is make a new plane layer, 2000 by 2000. And this is the first new thing in HitFilm Express 2017 we're going to look at. In previous versions of HitFilm Express, you were limited to creating composite shots or generated media at 1920 by 1080. You could not make a 2000 by 2000 plane in HitFilm 4 Express. I'm going to go ahead and scale this plane down to 35% at the moment. In the Effects tab, I want to open up Fractal Noise and drag that to the plane. There are some new types of fractal noise in HitFilm Express 2017. Energy, Fluid, and Smoke. I'm going to select the Smoke type of fractal noise. Play around with the seed for a moment. Alright, I'm happy with that. I'm going to come back up to the Effects panel and type in Twirl and drag that after the fractal noise. I'm going to come down and lower the radius of this twirl to choke it inside the plane and select the Elliptical Mask tool. And then I'm going to raise the radius of this back up just so it fills the entire circle. And that's it. That really is how this galaxy was made. Everything we do from this point is just going to be masking, fractal noise, and twirling. We just need to tune it to make it look how we want. I'm going to go ahead and turn the twirl angle up more and make this a little bit more extreme. About 290 works. And I'm going to come back up to my fractal noise, open up appearance, and play with the exposure and offset trying to get more areas of black and maybe a few more areas of pure white. Hmm. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to open up the layer properties and change the blend mode for this layer to screen. I'm also going to rename this layer Clouds 1 and then duplicate it. I'm going to rename the duplicate Clouds 2. I'm going to open up the effects in Clouds 2, turn off my twirl, and I'm going to go ahead and delete the mask. I'm going to select the Freehand Mask tool, and I'm going to draw a different mask. But before I draw the new mask, I want to set up something as a guideline. So I'm going to come into the New Layers panel and create another grade layer. I'm going to call this Grade Grid Overlay and drag the grid effect to it. I'm going to open up the grid effect and change the blend to add. I'm going to change the color to red, and I'm going to open up point 1, set that to 0, 0, open up point 2, set that to 150 by 150, and turn the border radius down to maybe 2. I'm going to duplicate the grid, change the duplicate to green, and I'm going to move point 2 to 75 by 75. I'm going to duplicate this grid one more time, change the color to blue, and this time the point 2 value to 2000 by 2000. Come up to Layer Properties, close up the effects, open up my Transform tab, and I'm going to turn the opacity of this layer down. This is just kind of giving me a guide so I can see what's happening on this screen. Because I have three different grids in red, green, and blue, all set to add blend mode, they're going to combine to form new colors where they overlap. The important one is this white line, where all three grids overlap. This is the center of my universe, or my layer. And I want this grid so I can set up the mask that I'm about to draw correctly. Now I'm going to come down and reselect Clouds 2 and draw Just this kind of shape.
Now that that's done, I can turn the grid off for the moment. Come back in and turn twirl back on. By drawing this cross-shaped mask, the twirl has given my Clouds 2 layer more of a galactic arm structure. So my Clouds 1 layer, which has a circular mask on it, forms very much a full disk. My Clouds 2 layer, with the cross-shaped mask on it, is forming very strong arms. This demonstrates that you can use different types of masks to control the shape of your galactic layers. When I turn both layers on, you don't really see too much of a difference other than Clouds 2 being a little bit brighter than Clouds 1. This is because Clouds 2, being a duplicate of Clouds 1, is using the exact same fractal noise and twirl settings. Let's turn off Clouds 1, go into Clouds 2, and customize that a bit. I'm going to drop the scale of that fractal noise to bring in more detail. Change the seed. Maybe rotate that a bit. Come down to the appearance, raise the exposure more, and I'm going to go ahead and scale that up a bit. Yeah, to 60. I'll go ahead and scale up Clouds 1 as well. Right now, my Clouds 2 disk is very regular, more regular than I want it to be. Let's break that up a bit. First, I'm going to go into the mask settings, open up the shape controls, and turn up the feather. I'm also going to turn up the roundness a bit, and that's starting to break up the shape a little bit. Let's come back over to the effects panel and type in heat. Heat distortion in HitFilm 4 Express was part of an add-on pack in HitFilm Express 2017 added to the base software. The new fluid, energy, and smoke distortion types are now available in the same add-on pack that used to have heat distortion. Heat distortion is very similar to turbulent displacement in After Effects. It generates a displacement map using an inbuilt fractal generator. I'm going to go ahead and drag heat distortion after the twirl. And you can see right away that that's breaking up the regularity of the shape. Once again, I'm just going to come in and play with the settings a bit until I'm happy with it. Lower the scale, turn the diffusion strength down to zero. I'm also going to want to go ahead and set the animation speed, wind speed to none. And play with the noise seed. Ooh, okay, I like that. That's starting to look very organic. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate clouds two. Name this next duplicate clouds three. I'm going to come in and turn off the heat distortion for the moment, open up fractal noise, and change the type from smoke to energy. Energy is going to give me a totally different texture, much more like filaments. I'm just going to play around with the settings a bit until I get something that I think looks good. Can't really go wrong at this stage. There's nothing you can do that's right or wrong. It's just all about trying to get the look that you want. Also going to change the twirl settings on this one just a little bit. Come back into heat distortion. Maybe change the scale. Change the distortion. Maybe change the seed again. That's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to come up to my layer properties. Just make certain that this layer is set to screen blend. And let's go ahead and turn back on all three of our layers and see where we're at. We're starting to get something that looks like a something. I think the Clouds 2 layer is too large, so I'm going to go ahead and scale that back down a bit. I also want to break up the shape of Clouds 1 a little bit more. Rather than use heat distortion, I'm going to use Diffuse. And I lie, I'm going to use heat distortion. I'm going to go ahead and create a plane layer, 1920 by 1080, make it black, and I'm going to drop it beneath everything else. I'm going to name this new plane Black BG. This is just to get a little bit more of a feel how this is going to look over the blackness of space rather than the uh, transparency checkerboard. That's actually looking really good at this point. I'm going to go ahead and create a point, name this Galaxy Point, change that to 3D, create a camera, and select my three clouds layers, change those to 3D, and parent them all to my galaxy point. With everything attached to the galaxy point, 
I can now move the entire rig around in one shot. Let me turn off clouds one and two. I think I'm going to go ahead and go back into clouds three and adjust its mask a bit, just to give it a different shape from clouds two. back on clouds one and cloud two. I'm going to rotate the galaxy point 45 degrees on the x-axis. Scroll down. Clouds one is my first disk, so I'm going to leave that where it is. Clouds two, I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to move it a little bit down. Grab clouds three, and move that just a little bit on the Z. I accidentally grabbed the um, Y-axis on the widget. I do want to be moving these on the Z. Come back up, grab the galaxy point. So again, as I start rotating that around, you can see that we have a little bit of depth, not enough to go completely sideways on it because these are still three flat planes. We can more or less move all the way around this thing. And it's starting to look pretty good. I'm going to reset my galaxy point. Let's give this some color. I'm going to go ahead and turn off clouds 2 and 3 and just focus on cloud 1. There are all kinds of effects in HitFilm to add color to a black and white image. I'm going to go into color correction and grab gamma. Gamma changes the midpoint of the red, green, and blue curves for the layer. So by just grabbing a red, green, or blue gamma and moving the slider, I'll start colorizing this image. Let's take out the red and boost up the blue a bit. I'm going to turn off clouds one, come up to clouds two, and oh, what am I going to use to color you? How about color balance? Color balance lets me adjust the shadows mid-tones, and highlights of a layer, adjusting the red, green, and blue levels individually. For this one, I think I'm going to go ahead and take the blue down a bit, as well as the green. And you can see that's starting to bring some red into the highlights. I'm going to come into the mid-tones, pull out even more of the blue, but less of the green, and then come down to shadows, and... Just pull out the green and leave more of the blue. Hmm. Happy with that. I'm going to turn off clouds two, come to clouds three, and I think for this one I'm going to go ahead and grab the radial gradient. I'm going to move the radial gradient above the fractal noise. Let me turn the fractal noise off for the moment. Set the blend to none. I'm going to turn off twirl and heat distortion so I can see what's happening better with my gradient. I'm going to make the inner radius color a bright cyanish tone. And I'm going to come to the outer radius, and I'm going to make that more of a dark red. I want to turn up the opacity on the outer radius. Make that darker. More like that. Now I'm going to turn my fractal noise back on. Come down to the blend for the fractal noise, and let's see what happens if I use overlay. Hmm. Multiply? I think I like that multiply. Turn back on my twirl and my heat distortion. And we can see that I've got some interesting colors going on. Now if I turn back on my cloud 1 and my cloud 2 layers, go back to my galaxy point, rotate this a bit. I think I'm going to come to clouds 1 and turn down its opacity. All right, I want to tweak this out a bit more. I'm going to go ahead and come back down. Nope, I'm going to come to my galaxy point. Reset that. I'm going to turn off clouds 3 and 2. And I'm going to duplicate clouds 1 again. 
I'm going to rename this dust. Turn its opacity back up. Blend to normal for now. I'm going to delete that gamma. I think I'll delete the diffuse too. I'm going to come back into my fractal noise type and change this from smoke to energy, I think. I'm going to reduce the scale on that. Let me turn the exposure up. Turn back on my heat distortion. And I think I'm going to adjust the heat distortion. Drop the scale on that a bit. Turn the distortion up a bit more. I'm going to come up to the effect and add a tint. Now this is going to be a little bit weird. I'm going to grab the eyedropper, map black to white, and I'm going to map white to kind of a dark brown. Set the tint amount to 100%, and then I'm going to come back up to my fractal noise and play with the offset and exposure values again. What I'm going to do with this layer is come back up to the blend mode and change this from normal to multiply. I'm going to rename that layer to dust01 duplicate it, and make this next layer dust 0, 2. I want to change the blend mode back to normal for a moment so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to come in, adjust the seed again, maybe adjust some of the sub-settings, break this shape up a little bit more, maybe twirl in just a little bit, come back down to the heat distortion, Change the seed on that again. Take that blend mode back to multiply. Now I can turn on the rest of my layers. I'm actually going to come into my existing cloud layers and change their blend modes from screen to add. And I'm even going to come back into clouds one. And I think I'm going to go ahead and turn its opacity back up. Because I've just been duplicating the same planes, Dust 1 and Dust 2 are already parented to my galaxy point. So I'm just going to come into their transform settings and move them a couple of points on the z-axis. Maybe 5 for Dust 1 and um, negative 5 for Dust 2. By adding the dust layers in, now we're getting some of the darker areas in the galaxy. Areas where dust and dirt would block the light. If I come back into my galaxy point and start rotating that around again, it really is starting to look pretty good. Let's see, clouds two. I'm gonna move the clouds two and clouds three layers, bring them in closer to the center of the galaxy. Just shrink this all up a bit. I'm actually pretty happy with that for the moment. What else can I do? Well, let's go ahead and put a glow. So I'm putting a glow on the clouds three layer. I'm cranking the intensity way too high for the moment. Again, so I can see what's going on better. Just the threshold and the radius. I want this to be fairly large, fairly soft glow. I'm going to go ahead and take that intensity back down to uh, one, maybe 1.3. 1.3 is good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this glow, and I'm going to paste it into clouds 2 and uh, clouds 1. Turn the threshold up on the clouds 1 layer. And that's starting to look really good. I'm going to go ahead and right click on my galaxy point and select reset one more time. I'm going to duplicate clouds 1 again, move that up to the top, turn off these lower layers, and on the new Cloud1 duplicate, I'm going to delete the mask, and I'm going to delete all of my effects. And with this white plane, I'm going to rename this to Core1. Grab my freehand mask, and I'm just going to draw kind of a diamond shape here. Center it up a bit more. Open up the mask, open up the shape properties. I'm going to leave the feather at both. I'm going to feather this out a lot. And I'm going to crank up the roundness a lot. Keep the layer properties on add. 
What I'm going to do now with Core01 is open up the Transform properties and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis. We can't see it anymore because it's facing edge onto the camera. But if I grab the camera and move up a bit, you can see my core layer lying flat in the center of the universe. I'm going to duplicate Core 01 three times. Core 02, Core 03, and Core 04. In Core 2, I'm going to open up the Transform Properties, go to the Orientation, and I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees. Core 3, I'm going to open up its Transform Properties, go to the Orientation, and rotate it 90 degrees on the Y. Core 4, same thing, but 135 degrees. And from there, you can see I'm starting to get this starburst shape. Let me go ahead and reset my camera and turn on the rest of my galaxy layers. Grab my galaxy point. And those core layers are all way too bright. So I'm going to change their blend modes from add to screen. I could have done this a lot more efficiently by making certain I was happy with the size of Core 1 before making the duplicates and rotating them. So don't do what I just did, because that was inefficient. I'm also going to turn the opacity on all of these down to hmm, 50. Now I'm going to come back to my galaxy point. That's actually starting to look really nice. In the Galaxy Point transformation properties, I'm going to go ahead and start scaling the entire rig up to fill the screen. Not bad, not bad at all. I want to get a few stars in here. And what I'm going to do is duplicate Core 4 again. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off everything below the duplicate. Come back up to my Core 4 duplicate and rename that Stars 01. I'm going to delete the mask. I'm going to go ahead and turn the opacity back up to 100. And I'm going to come back to the Effects panel and select Fractal Noise. Twirl open the Fractal Noise and come over to this preset drop down. This is another new feature in Hit Film Express 2017. Many, but not all, effects now have starting presets built in to help you out. And if I twirl down the preset menu, I can come down to star field. That's a little bit hard to see. There aren't as many stars there as I'd like. So I'm going to open up the transform settings. I'm going to open up the exposure settings. And I'm going to turn up the exposure. Maybe adjust the offset a bit until I can start to see these stars appearing. I'm going to grab the elliptical mask tool and click on the Layer tab at the top of the viewer, so I can just see the layer before any effects are added. Go back to my viewer, and there we go. I'm going to turn everything back on, make sure I have my Stars layer selected again. I'm going to come into the Scale property and start scaling this up. Those stars are starting to look a little large, so I'm going to come back into the Fractal Noise and just adjust my exposure and offset a bit. Actually, maybe take the scale down. Oh, yeah. Let's see if I take that down to four. Ooh, that's starting to look good. It's a lot of stars. I'm going to go ahead and open up this mask, open up the shape properties, change the feather to in, and start feathering this mask. Now I'm going to select the stars plane, and I'm going to duplicate that another three times. Stars 2, stars 3, and stars 4. In each of these, I'm going to come in and change the seeds on the fractal noise. Then I'm going to come down to the transform properties, and I'm going to start rotating these in space on the x-axis. Since this one is already at 90, I'm going to go ahead and set stars 4 to 0. I'm going to 
come into stars three, open up the fractal noise, change the seed, transform settings, change your orientation to 45. I'm gonna come down to stars two, change the seed, and change you to 135. That's too many stars, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the rest of the galaxy for the moment and just focus on my stars layers. Notice up here at the top of the controls panel, I've typed in offset. This is just going to show me the offset settings for the fractal noise, so I don't have to um, page through as much of the menus. That's a lot fewer stars. Now, turn everything else back on. That's pretty much it. Hmm. What's that hard edge? Let's figure it out. Ah, clouds one. Need to feather out the clouds one layer. Feather it in. There we go. That takes care of that hard mask. This is pretty much ready to animate. There's only one last thing I want to check first. I'm going to go into my clouds one layer, come up to the controls and type in speed. And I can see that in the animation properties for the heat distortion, I have not reduced the wind speed to zero. I do want to reduce the wind speed because if I don't, then the entire galaxy is going to shimmer as we animate it. I'm also going to take the noise speed down to zero. And I'm going to do this for the rest of my layers. Before we get into keyframing our camera, let's give this galaxy a little bit of a rotation and a little bit of a variation. So I'm going to come down to Clouds 1. In its transform controls, I'm going to go ahead and enable keyframing on Z. I'm going to go to the last frame and change the Z rotation to 15. I'm going to repeat this for Dust 1. Go to the first frame, enable keyframing, and go to the last frame. I'm going to set the Z rotation instead of to 15, I'm going to set it just a little bit different, 14. I'm going to do the same with Dust 2, maybe make that 16, and the same with Clouds 2 and 3. Maybe make you 15.5, Clouds 3. So now over the course of the composite shot, the entire galaxy is going to rotate. But because I've set the rotation speeds of all of the different cloud and dust layers just a little bit off, it's going to add just a little bit more organic movement to this entire animation. One other thing I can do to make this just a little bit more dynamic, return to my clouds layers, my clouds and dust layers, come into effects, open up twirl, and the property we want to change is called angle. I'm going to enable keyframing, go to the last frame, and maybe give that another 20 degrees of twirl or so. 212. I've just RAM previewed the first couple of seconds of this. Just enough to let you see how that galaxy is starting to twirl around itself. It's a slow, subtle movement, and it looks pretty good. So the last thing we need to do is fill out the background so that everything doesn't fall off to black. So that this galaxy isn't completely isolated in an interstellar void. I'm going to create a new composite shot, and I'm going to call this Environment Wrap, and I'm going to make it 4K. I'm just going to go ahead and create another plane, match to the timeline, come back up to the effects, and add fractal noise. And I'm going to add that same star field preset we had earlier. I'm going to duplicate this, change the blend mode of the top layer to Add, change the seed, and maybe I'll do that one more time. Duplicate, change the seed. Maybe put a grade layer on top of this, 
add a glow. Turn my intensity up way too high again. Just adjust the glow settings a bit. I'm going to go ahead and return to my galaxy setup, come to my media pool, and drag this environment wrap composite shot right above the black plane. Come up to my effects tab, and go into the 360 degree video viewer. I'm going to scale down that layer. I'm actually not liking that that much. I'm going to kill a couple of those planes. That's a little bit better. I think the brighter smudged areas in the background look more like other galaxies off in the distance as opposed to stars. And with all of that set up, we're ready to animate our camera. I'm going to set a keyframe for the position, move to the end of the composition, and get a little bit closer. Maybe to there? And this is what we've built so far. It's looking rather nice. There's a lot of good color to it. There's a lot of texture detail. There's a lot of subtle motion to it. There are flaws, like that central spike in the core is a little bit too sharp, but there are ways to deal with that. We're not going to cover any of that in this tutorial. Instead, I encourage you to experiment with other hit film effects. Here's my final version of the galaxy. All I did was render out what we've seen so far, re-import that into HitFilm, put a time reverse on it, and then I added two layers of glow and an auto lens flare, which smooths it out really nicely. I hope you've enjoyed this look at how to create the depths of space inside your home computer using HitFilm Express 2017. I'm Mike Miller for Tri-M Visual, and I'll see you next time.